Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, wait, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoy this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. talk about the two most important scriptures right after this. Hello, Tony Aquila here. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's an honor and I will be singing for you, Holy is the Lamb. Thank you as much as it does me. Thank you so much. Hello, this is Tony Henderson Mayer's television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur, known as Wise Courtship all over social media because of my book with the three-step system that will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And listen, we're at moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer where we come together to read God's word, to give you some encouragement, and to, um, to pray for your concerns. I want to thank everyone who are who's watching me various uh, via various social media platforms. Thank you guys so very much for that. And I want you to go ahead and share, yeah, by clicking, uh, yeah, way down there. <laughs> I click right there on uh, various platforms. Go ahead and share this broadcast so that someone will be blessed by it. And so today we're going to talk about um, the two most important scriptures, the two most important scriptures and so we're going to go ahead and get into God's word. And I'm going to be reading from the New International um, the New International Bible, but you can pull it up on your phones, your iPads, or your apparatuses in any way that you feel comfortable. So we're going to go right into this. Luke 10, 25 through 37. On one occasion... An expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to, in to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there because we read all of that in our last um, broadcast. So I'm really going to just be reading um, 25 through, um, through 28, okay, through 28. So again, it says, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Notice test. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love your Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this and you will live. Well, <laughs> the two most important scriptures, we just read them to you. We just read them to you. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. Because these two scriptures really um, is what the whole entire Bible is all about. It's what the whole 
uh, I would say a summary or cliff notes of what the Bible is all about. And, you know, it, all in the Old Testament, everything that happened, everything in the New Testament, what happened is all about us loving God, about us having a relationship with him. And some of us, we have out of the two scriptures, we have the second scripture, right? But we don't love God. We don't acknowledge him. We don't serve him. We don't give him all of our heart. We don't give them all of our mind, all of our soul. You know, sometimes we give them our heart, but we, you know, our mind is weak. We don't give them all of our gifts and our talents and our abilities. You know, we, we get half-hearted when it comes to God. When we, we're brilliant in the corporate world, and when we get to church or we get to serving God, we fall asleep. We're less energetic. We don't, we don't produce any good ideas. I, you know, that always, always made me go, hmm, you know, things that make you go, hmm, things that make you scratch your head. I, I couldn't figure that out even as a child. Why would be, we would be super brilliant in the areas that we work in, but when we get to church, we don't know how to do anything. We don't, we don't have any great ideas or we don't have any energy or effort behind God. We work some of us six days a week. And when the seventh day comes, we won't rest. We won't celebrate God. We won't even acknowledge him. Some of us don't talk to him anytime during the week. And then when we get to church, we're lax about worship and praise. We think we're too cute to open up our mouths and praise God. Y'all need to share this because this is a good broadcast right here. We think we're too cute to raise our hands or to, to celebrate God and to tell him thank you. It's not kind of odd to me that we wouldn't thank God and we couldn't breathe without him. Literally could not breathe without him. All while we trying to sit there and act real important, he could strike us down dead. We could just turn up and little heels just turn up and curl up and everybody be looking like, ooh, what happened to her? Okay, but listen, we get cute at the wrong times. We just don't love God the way we ought to love him. We don't give him all of what we need to. And some of us do praise God. We do honor him, but are we giving him our all? Are we giving him everything? Are we turning to him? Are we trusting him the way we ought to trust him? Are we leaning on him? Quite honestly, we all have to improve in that area. Some of us, a whole lot. And some of us, we just need to, you know, keep it going and go a little deeper and go a little deeper. Some of us need to relax and just trust him. He's done it before us before, and he's shown enough can do it again. So what we worried about, you know, sometimes I get people are customers and stuff like that and they have a hard time relaxing okay <laughs> relaxing we got this okay we got you um sometimes when i'm directing you know um a production sometimes it's not always an actor but when it's a person that's a newbie okay they are the ones that's most frustrated and everybody else is like relax we got this relax we know what we're doing okay and so we have to learn how to relax in God and celebrate him some of us have this first part together loving God and celebrating him and giving him all our all our heart our mind our soul but when we get to the second part to love our neighbors as ourselves now last week we talked about who our neighbors were it's not necessarily somebody you live in next door to Okay, it's people you see every day. Those are your neighbors, okay? Those are people God wants you to show love to as you love yourself. Well, there's two problems here. Some of us don't even love ourselves. And we've got to repent from that. We've got to heal from that. We, you know, Satan's got us so messed up that we don't know who we are and whose we are. And we've got to work on that because I believe when you don't love yourself, you treat everybody like trash. Mm-hmm. I wish I could really sit here and talk about that longer, but I, you know, I might slip up and embarrass somebody, honey. I'm not trying to embarrass nobody because we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But I'm telling you, some of y'all watching me now, you couldn't treat me right. You didn't treat her right. You didn't treat him right. You had a history of not treating people right. That's because you don't love yourself. 
and you learn how to love yourself, not put yourself above other people, not put yourself above God, but you learn to value and love yourself by reading God's word and knowing who you are in Christ. All of those isms, the sexism, the racism, the ageism, all of that jealousy, that hatred and malice, all of that will begin to melt away as you know who you are in Christ. And some of us don't love others as ourselves because we think we're better than others. We think others are beneath us, that they're not worthy of love, that they're not even God's children, that they're not in a class with us. But let me tell you something, we are all in the same class, humans. <laughs> where there's no race, somebody type that in the chat box, there is no race. There's only the human race, man made up race, you know, the, the uh, black race, the Asian race, the white race. Race, that sounds like a competition, right? And you know, that's man made. Bloop, somebody share that. <laughs> But God only came up with the human race. When you read the Bible, it does not even mention race except in the area when it's a distinction with Jews and Gentiles. That's one time. But that's not race in the way that we define it. Okay. It does talk about people in nationalities and ethnic groups so that you would know where they were from, but not in that way that we do. And we put so many distinctions on people, that people are so different from us when really we are so much more the same than we are different. Most of us have two eyes, two arms, two hands. Most of us have red blood. I don't know anybody with green blood. And you know, if we come up with names like illegal aliens or just aliens, that bothers me too, because are they from Mars? <laughs> We're humans, human beings that God created. And when you don't like what God created, you have insulted him. So just take your little holy hands and take them on down, honey, and hush your mouth unless you're going to say, God, forgive me. If you're guilty of that, I need for you to put that in the chat box. God, forgive me. Because if you hated something I made, me and you will have a problem, okay? <laughs> You don't come in somebody's house and say, I hate that cake you made. I hate that sofa. I hate your children. I hate all of it. But we do all of this talking. We riot. We stomp on people. We yell profanities and ignorant sayings and then go to church and say, God bless me. It does not work that way. I need you to share this because the truth will make you free. Yes, even in a day of alternative facts, God's word will cut right through that like we're slicing a nice piece of cake. God's word will cut right on through that. And I declare and I decree that if you share this, someone who needs to hear this, I'm telling you right now, you will not rest. You will not be able to sleep until you submit up under God's will and realize that we are all human, made under, made under God's hands, and we have God's spirit within us. And he loves each and every one of us. And so if you, are, if you are a Christian, you ought to know what the two most important scriptures are. And if you're not a Christian and you're watching this, I understand that you may not understand why this is so important. But listen, if you would like to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, because that's the only thing that really opens your heart, the relationship with Jesus Christ when you get him in your heart, it may take a while for some people. It may be overnight. It may be a gradual process, but he begins to melt away all of those ridiculous ways of thinking that I'm better than you, that uh, I, I, I can't speak to you. I don't love you. I hate you and all of that. He begins to melt all of that away because as you read God's word, you will see, including me, how far off we are from being in line with God. Yes, even me who reads God's word, who teaches his word, who goes to church and all of that, we are so far removed from where he wants us to be, but the Bible helps gets us there and gets us in line. And whenever you start reading it, you pull further and further away because now your way becomes more important than God's way. The two most important scriptures 
You better memorize those. But more importantly, you better live it. Well, listen, um, I want to invite all of you who do not know of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Uh, first of all, you are to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he's God's son. And if you confess that, and you also believe it in your heart, the Bible says, you will be saved. And when you're saved, you're what we call a Christian. And you can now, with all the rights and privileges, go before the Lord with your requests. You can um, ask the Holy Spirit, which is the third personality of God, to guide you. Because uh, truth be told, honey, we get in some sticky situations and we don't know what to do. But God will direct us if we ask him to. And if we listen to him. Well, and I'm going to pray for your concerns at this moment. So let's bow our head and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you and we lift you up. We magnify you. We salute you, God. We just recognize you as the maker and creator of all things and all people. God, we ask that you forgive us for not loving the people that you have made, all colors, all shapes, all nationalities two different genders, in every kind of form, in every shade of color. God, forgive us for not loving them as we love ourselves. Forgive us for committing this sin over and over again, hating our brother and making our brother's life miserable because we feel that we're better than anybody else. God, humble us and let us know how you feel about the people that you have here on the earth. Give us a sensitive heart and a sensitive ear. God, we thank you for life. We thank you for health and strength. We thank you for peace, even in the midst of a storm. We thank you for bringing us to this new year. We celebrate you and we honor you. God, we pray for all those who are hurting right now, those who are hurting from racism, from sexism, from ageism, those who are hurting from this pandemic, those who are hurting, oh God, for, uh, from the egregious things that we've seen on the television as people over try to overtake our capital. God, we pray, oh God, that you will change the hearts and minds of men. Only you can do it, God. We pray that you change their hearts even now, God, that you will change it toward you. Because until we get you inside of us, we will not be able to love our neighbors. God, we pray for every sick person, every person that's struggling financially, every person who's lonely, whose heart is broken. We pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up. And we touch and agree, <clears throat> knowing you said in the word that this poor man cried and the Lord heard them and delivered him from out of all his troubles. And we trust you, God, that you will deliver us and that you will hear us, and that you will bring justice, because you, only you, are true and just and right. And we, um, now God, whatever the prayer requests are, we know that whether your answer be yes, no, or wait a minute, it's going to be better than anything we've ever expected. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. I have some encouraging words from Ron Jefferson. Coming up right after this. Ron E. Jefferson, host of Fire, the Gospel Experience, here to share with you the gospel heat, spiritual truth, and inspirations and enlightenment. Want to thank Woman of God, Tony Henderson Meyer, for this wonderful kingdom collaboration to share inspirational truth. I would like to share with you all about trials, troubles, and tribulations. 1 Peter 4 and 12 tells us, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Trials, troubles, tribulations, and yes, testings. We all have them. And I'm sure that we always will. These are all ways that we will find ways to discover ourselves. 
to know what it is that we're really made of as well as the potential to get there it's all about outlook how do you see yourself now as opposed to then did the trials troubles and tribulations throw your faith in such a loop that now you are wondering doubting despondent depressed disillusioned do you feel like somebody somewhere gave you a raw deal and sold you a sad bill of goods by not telling you that these things will surely come. I was so greatly encouraged by a sermon by Bishop Noel Jones where he preached, I had to go through it. He was saying that everything that happened to us was ultimately for our good. Reminds me of my favorite Bible scripture verse Romans 8 28 and we know all things work together for the good to them that are called according to the purposes of God that every pain hear me teardrop anxiety fear uncertainty and every other negative thing was allowed by God to bring you and I to a place of God-centeredness where our lives are now so much hid in God that we are blessed to become his eyes, ears, hands, feet, and voice to declare the great change over our life for good. Good to everyone that embarks into our life with the wonderful blessings from God to share with all. So, beloved, fear not those trials, troubles, and tribulations, for they will surely come. But know this, that when those trials, troubles, and tribulations do come, that our God is already there far ahead of them to keep us, lead us, guide us through those things that will certainly and definitely make us and mold us more and more into the very image of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So when those trials, troubles, and tribulations do come beloved please believe this because they surely will don't run from them but be ye ready for them for they are under the control of our almighty awesome God for our good amen well, I want to thank um, Ron Jefferson for those awesome and amazing words. And I want to thank Aquila for her um, beautiful rendition. We thank her so very, very much for ministering to us these last couple of uh, shows. And thank you. She um, hails. You can hear her accent. We thank you so much for joining us from around the world. And so you can uh, get in contact with Ron Jefferson on his radio and podcast show, Fire. Make sure you check him out. And so, um, yeah, that's it. We got to go. You can visit me on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayors. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, that's right, we've got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video. Are you subscribed to the Wise Courtship Philosophy? then you need to get your Wise Courtship gear at the Wise Courtship store. Go to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store. 
all the letters are lowercase. They make amazing gifts from children, adults, men and women, jewelry, hats, cell phone cases, t-shirts, and more. Represent Wise Courtship by going to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship Store. 